For me, as a record label owner, I promise this has been one of the most valuable things that I have ever learned. As a record label owner, I have definitely learned a lot since starting my own record label. And as an entertainment attorney today, I have an opportunity to not only work with other record labels, but to negotiate deals on behalf of artists with major labels. So through it all, I have learned so much about how these contracts look, but also some of those key things that you just wouldn't ever know until you actually get into this kind of environment and you are negotiating these deals. And because the whole point of why I do these videos and why I have this YouTube channel is that I want you to succeed and I want you to know about this stuff ahead of time so you have the best opportunity for success. So in today's video, I'm gonna give you five crucial things I wish I knew before starting my record label. Hi guys, I'm Miss Crystal. I'm an entertainment attorney, public speaker, and author of How to Keep Your Dukes Up in the Music Business. I'm the owner of Dukes Up Records, and most importantly, I'm an independent musician. Be sure to subscribe, turn on those bell notifications so you don't miss our weekly videos helping you with your music businesses, record labels, and getting you to that next level. Number five on things I wish I knew before starting my record label, your music catalog matters. As part of your standard deal with your artists, you are likely going to own the music in exchange for the services that you provide to support the artist, to market the artist, and to basically have a team to support the artist's career. And as you sign artists to your record label over time, you build a music catalog. So it's gonna be kind of the database of your works that your record label owns and has the ability to now go and do things with. Now, one of the most financially beneficial things that you can do when it comes to how you utilize the catalog is to try and get music placed in TV and film. This is where some of the biggest bucks will come in for record labels. And in fact, I know record labels that will exclusively just have artists that make music for TV and film. So for example, you know, you might get one song placed in, uh, let's say, feature film, and for, you know, 45 second, one minute use in a feature film, you might get a licensing or a sync fee, which it's called in the industry, of let's say $50,000. Or for a major commercial, let's say for Target or for Walmart, if there's maybe even an attachment of a notable artist name to it, you're looking at a licensing fee of maybe $100,000 or $200,000. So there's a lot of money and you do all of that just with the actual music that you have and any opportunity that comes up to actually utilize that music in TV as well as film. And the other piece of this is that you may have an intention just to continue growing the label and maybe you don't really wanna sell any music that you acquire, but if you do, there can be a really big payoff down the road. So for example, I had a deal that I did for a client and we basically were just selling one artist's catalog that the record label owned. And that alone brought in a little less than a half a million dollars in that one sale for the record label. And what a lot of people don't know is that masters are not only very valuable, but valuable depending on the territory in the world. So for example, in the United States, you know, acquisition fees that are paid for masters are a lot higher in other territories, but we're also talking about things that might be a half a million dollars or several million dollars. But for an artist who actually has a little name recognition, now we're talking about something like 10, 20, 30 million dollars for an artist's legacy of catalog that the record label owns. So in simplified terms, I'm basically just saying focus on the long-term plan as well as the short-term plan. You want to blow up the music, you want it to be a big success, but there are things that you can do with the music down the road as well. Number four on things I wish I knew before starting my record label, don't give away too much too soon. For a lot of my record label clients who are just getting started, they are usually working with family and friends and those people are donating their time, they're being so helpful, and we usually like these people who are working with us. And so in the beginning, we might say, look, since you're helping me so much, I'm gonna give you a portion of the company, meaning actual ownership. And maybe that ownership is 20% or 50%, or maybe you have it divided between people. But by doing that, you're putting yourself in a risky position. Because if these are people that you haven't ever worked with in a business capacity, things change. As someone who works with clients who are friends all the time, I've seen when this goes 
really badly because you know your friends, you know your family in a certain light. But when it comes to like work ethic and follow through and communication, it's a whole different ball game. And so, you know, when you find that maybe your partner isn't really keeping up and isn't returning your calls and isn't doing what they said that they were going to do, but now you're stuck with them because you actually made them an owner in the company, that's going to be kind of hairy for you to get out of. And sometimes it means that now you need to pay a big amount of money to just buy them out of the company. So a uh, kind of pro tip that I say to my clients is if you're considering actually giving away ownership to someone, it doesn't mean that's not going to happen, but give it some time and maybe just talk about doing what's called profit participation. So you and your friend are going to work together and you'll say, I'm going to give you 50% of anything that we earn. We'll sign a partnership agreement, but you're not actually an owner in a company and we'll revisit this in six months or in a year. And that's a perfectly reasonable kind of thing to set. So your partner or your friend is getting good profits, making some money, helping you to grow and to build. And then, you know, if things are going well in that six months, in that year, make them an official owner in the company. Number three on things I wish I knew before starting my record label, don't take investment dollars too soon. Now I've had a couple of different investment opportunities that actually were a result of the fact that I was looking for investment money. I had this bright idea that although I didn't have, let's say, $300,000 to kind of purge into the record label to do all these things that I wanted to do, new hires, I could just bring on an investor. And so I put together all of the proper paperwork you need when you are kind of courting investors and I gave, you know, uh, proposals and presentations and, you know, we had some pretty cool opportunities and we had some people who wanted to sign. However, what we found throughout that process is that there's some things you just don't think about because you're so focused on the money. I want to get the capital invested. You know, I want to get that infusion of cash so we can kind of keep going and make those new hires. But, you know, the money comes with strings attached and the strings are the investor and what the investor wants. Now, in the last tip, we talked about don't give away ownership in the company. Well, for a lot of investors, they want ownership in the business in exchange for the investment. And so again, even though you might be super excited about what that amount of money is, if you give away 20% of your business, they invest $50,000. Well, in 10 years, if you've blown up the company and now someone has that much ownership in your business, you might be kicking yourself because the valuation and the actual value of your company will go up over time. And so, you know, for my team and I, we actually had some opportunities, one of which even fell through at the very last minute and it was, tough to handle at that point because it was a lot of money and we had all these big plans that we were going to move forward on however because it didn't work out it ended up being the best thing that could have happened and that's because this particular investor was not a good fit because we were so focused on getting that investment not really focusing too much on the relationship and who the person was and you know for everything that ended up happening it really was the best outcome it didn't feel fantastic in the moment but it was just that lesson of just it was too early and if we do decide to take on investors in the future, we definitely have a much better understanding of who we're looking to do a deal with. Number two on the things I wish I knew before starting my record label, have all your contract templates in place. Now there's kind of different verticals of, of where and how you're going to need to use your contract. So let me explain in kind of this, you know, cylinder right here, we're going to say all the contracts that you need for you and your team. All right, so the people who work for you don't have a handshake deal. You need to make sure that everything is super, super clear about what that person is doing for your company, how much are they getting paid, what are their you know, obligations and duties, and sometimes even more importantly than any of that, what can they do without getting your authorization? So if you hire someone and then they go out and they go, well, I work for you know his record label and I'm allowed to do these deals and they're signing contracts on behalf of your record label, is that okay? If it's not, that's why you really want to have it in a contract and, and so that you discuss it ahead of time, but you have the ability to do something about it if they go and sign a contract on your behalf that you never said that they could. Another vertical of contracts is going to be everything having to do with the artist. Have your record label agreement. Things like who's going to own the music? How much is the artist getting? Are you advancing amounts to the artist? 
Are you repaying yourself for what you advanced, such as studio time, paying producers and mixers and mastering engineers? And if you don't have these things in the contract, it creates confusion. But all the way back to where we started at the beginning of the video, owning the music is so essential and valuable. Under copyright law, if you don't get proper language in your contract saying that the music is being assigned to your record label, it technically is still owned by the artist. So make sure you have a solid agreement with your artist, and this is typically called a record label agreement. And in fact, as it comes to these really essential contracts, I've put together this online course. It's how to build a record label. And it's the A to Z guide on everything you need to know, setting up the company properly, distributing music, doing your deals. But then I give you all the essential contracts that you need so that you can stay legally protected every step of the way. If you're interested in checking out that course, link down in the description below. Number one on things I wish I knew before starting my record label, have a strong network of support. Now, I'm always gonna say, make sure you have an attorney for your record label because when the things come up, like getting the final deal signed, reviewing contracts, you have a problem, someone's saying, you know, claiming something happened, you need to have the right person in your corner to have your back, to fight those legal battles. That's going to be an attorney, specifically an entertainment attorney who is experienced in this area of law. But beyond that attorney, I find that clients sometimes need other types of attorneys as well. Well, for example, immigration attorneys seem to come up more often with my clients who have touring musicians. So for example, your artist is traveling to Canada and then they have a problem at the border or they can't get in, they can't get out, there's some kind of issue. Well, what happens in those situations when we need to actually take legal action and to deal with a problem, sometimes we have to bring in someone who is specialized in that area of law. There's also criminal law, things that come up. Maybe our clients will have a DOI. And so, you know, as a record label, kind of having a network of people that you trust so that if and when the issue comes up, you can make that call. However, you know, what I find, especially as an entertainment attorney, is that that's a network that I've personally built because not every record label is gonna have the time to do that. They don't know who these other people are. So maybe your main attorney can kind of assist with some of that. But taking out the legal aspect, your network of contacts might be with music distribution companies. Maybe you need to have contacts and someone that you can call when you have issues with performance rights earnings, right? So with a company like BMI or ASCAP, being comfortable calling, let's say, Sound Exchange when there's issues with music royalties and maybe you haven't collected everything for the artist. And you know, I'm not saying, oh, you should know everybody right now. Don't stress out about that. This happens over time. But more importantly, what I'm getting at is more of when you meet someone that you have a good connection with, you have a good rapport, make a note, send a follow-up email so that when you circle back for that help, it's gonna be a lot easier to get that person on the phone, but also in how you kind of conduct yourself. Be nice to people, right? So on like a human level, if you leave a good taste in people's mouths and they like you, they're gonna wanna help you down the road when something happens. And for me, as a record label owner, I promise this has been one of the most valuable things that I have ever learned. There is so much that goes into having a successful label. And I know there's a lot of things that we worry about. We worry about, are we doing you know, everything right? Are we protecting ourselves? And so that's why I've put together this online course. It's to include all the contracts that you need so you can sign with your team and your artists. I'm teaching you about copyrights and trademarks, how to register and protect your company. But also I'm a real, you know, record label owner. I do this every day. And so that's why I include the actual mentorship that I give to my clients every day on getting your distribution deals and actually getting the music out there. So anyway, be sure to check out the online course. Link is down in the description below. Beyond being a record label owner, I am also an artist. If you're interested in checking out a little of what I do, just search Miss Crystal on all music platforms. And I'll be sure to link a playlist of music videos at the end of this video. Don't forget to come say hi on social media. It's always cool to meet you guys and I'm definitely the most active on Instagram. I'm gonna get out of here, but don't forget to subscribe, turn on those bell notifications so you don't miss any videos from your new favorite redhead. I'm Miss Crystal. Bye.